Edward Gerald Baker was one of the most successful people in Houston, Texas, back in the 80s. He had made his wealth in the oil business and became truly respected and recognized for his success. Ed Baker was one of the founders of the Vanguard Groups International, and he started this business together with his second wife, known by the name of Mary Walken. Back in the 80s, this couple was extremely successful in the field of oil, given that their company became one of the most successful and fastest growing businesses in all of America. He seemed to have it all. A very successful business, a loving wife, and a fortune. But that happiness didn't last forever. Soon after becoming one of the richest people in Texas, a seemingly dark cloud appeared above his head, both in his personal and professional life. In 1984, the married couple decided to separate. The reason for the splitting up is not entirely known, but it is speculated that it had something to do with Ed's midlife crisis. In that period, Baker acted irrationally and became a textbook example of someone going through such a crisis. He bought a wild car, an extremely expensive Jaguar. He spent a lot of his time in casinos losing money on gambling, and even visited a plastic surgeon for not one, but two facelift interventions. Given that he and Mary spent 10 years together, nobody thought that he would be remarrying so soon after a separation. But he did. Ed married Karen Walbridge and spent 11 months with her before abruptly divorcing her. Only a few months later, Ed had found yet another wife, a woman that he met in his company and one of his workers, Sandra Hoff. However, marriage after marriage, none of his problems seemed to have fade away. Ed started spending more than he earned. He was spending a lot of money on the most unnecessary and extravagant things and he stopped paying attention to his company's business. As a result of that, the business started to run down. Regardless of his business's success, Ed seemed to pay no attention to it whatsoever, and he continued with his frivolous behavior. He spent investors' money on the same extravagant and unnecessary things, and received a fair warning from his attorney, Ward Busey telling Ed that if he kept his behavior like that, he could face time in jail. Unfazed, Ed ignored that warning. The next year, 1985, saw the worst year for the Vanguard Groups International, and the worst year for Baker himself. The Vanguard Groups International was just one step away from bankruptcy. Vanguard's investigators were all over Baker, for his extravagant behavior and demanded money from him. He informed his private investigator, Bob Gale, that he was going to have a bailout from some mysterious and suspicious source and wanted Bob Gale to do some thorough background check on them. Unfortunately, his private investigator seemed to have found that his savior was closely connected with the mafia. On November 6th, at around 7 p.m., Ed went to see his ex-wife Mary. He was reported to have been extremely anxious and frightened, paranoid even. He claimed that somebody was after him and that somebody was chasing him. He was absolutely sure that somebody was after him because on that day, he got two anonymous threatening phone calls. One anonymous message stating, This is your day to die. He told Mary that he was convinced he would die on that day. Mary tried her best to calm him down, and she advised him to contact the police. But he never did. He thought that absolutely no one could help him, and that it was already too late for him. Instead of heading over to the police, he went straight home from Mary's house. When he got home, he told his wife Sandra that she had to leave the city, 
and he sent her to Austin as a precaution. Hours later, Ed spoke with Sandra on the phone and revealed that he had got another threat from over the phone. On November 8th, a dead body was found in his Jaguar, around 20 miles outside Houston. It was found burning with a male body inside the car. The body was so much destroyed that the identification wasn't possible. After forensics observed the body, they reported that it was most likely the dead and charred body of Ed Baker. On the floor of the Jaguar was a burnt 32 caliber revolver, and investigators found out it had shot out a bullet, most likely one to the head of the dead body since it seemed to have a gunshot wound to the head. Next to the Jaguar, there was something else. Three one-gallon gas cans. But what makes this whole case a mystery? It is the fact that on the same day when he died, Ed left a letter to Ward Boosie saying the following thing. Dear Ward, if you are reading this letter, it means that I am dead. I've had some threats on my life. You've been a good friend to me. Take care of Sandy and the kids. With a letter accompanying it, which Boosie was supposed to take to Sandra. So, who killed Ed Baker? Is he dead? Or is there a chance that he's still alive? His wife, Sandra, is convinced that the Mafia took his life away. Others are convinced that he killed himself and that he left the letter knowing that he is going to leave his loved ones behind that day. Yet on the other hand, some people are convinced that he is still alive, that it was not his body in the Jaguar, and that the whole situation was staged so that Ed Baker can have a new life away from everything. What do you think? Do you think the Mafia got to him before anyone else could? Do you think that Ed, who was once a successful businessman and was one of the richest people in America, couldn't find a way out of the situation? Do you think he outsmarted the people who were looking for him that day? Or do you truly believe that he was just simply paranoid? To this day, the mystery surrounding Ed Baker has yet to be solved.